Externally bonded FRP composites are cost-effective systems for dealing with rehabilitation. They handle deterioration caused by environmental effects, damage caused by impact, and higher load demand brought on by more severe code requirements, especially in the seismic field. They also can address changes in the use of structures and higher strength and ductility demands to correct design or construction errors. The contractor will need to provide the correct concrete surface profile, or CSP, for the substrate being treated with FRP, according to all project-specific documents drawn by the design professional. The adhesion of the FRP system to the substrate is typically the most critical element of the design. Outside of rare applications that are not considered bond critical, such as when a member is completely encapsulated, FRP systems require a properly prepared substrate to ensure bond performance. Surface preparation is dependent on the type of FRP material specified. Regardless of the application, a CSP of 3 to 5 is generally required in the project specifications. A CSP of 3 to 4 is generally used for fabrics, and a CSP of 4 to 5 is used for laminates. Grinding may be necessary for treating all protrusions and form lines, as well as for rounding off outside corners to a radius of a half inch or 12 millimeters if they are covered by FRP. This will avoid damage to the FRP fibers and provide an even contact between the substrate and the FRP. Trace all locations of FRP using the engineering plans and drawings before beginning the work to ensure proper placement of the carbon fiber products. Precision in the placement of carbon fiber is critical to its success and has been precisely calculated by the design professional. All deviations may have consequences to the structural performance of the system being installed. Part of the preparation process is pre-cutting the necessary quantity of carbon fiber, in this case the fabric, to the proper length and size. This avoids unnecessary delays that could cause the resins to harden before you have a chance to install the fabric. To preserve the line tracings that mark the location of the FRP installation, masking tape may be used before installing the primer and paste. This will allow the markings to remain visible for the following steps. Maparap Primer 1 is used in order to consolidate and prime the substrate which optimizes bonding performance for the other components of the MapaRap composite system. MapaRap Primer 1 is installed with a 3 8 inch or 10 millimeter nap roller at a rate of 150 to 190 square feet per US gallon, or 3.67 to 4.65 square meters per liter. Very porous substrates may require a second coat after the first coat has been completely absorbed. Once prepared, MapaRap Primer 1 has a working time of 90 minutes. MapaRap 11 and MapaRap 12 should be mixed thoroughly according to mixing instructions on the technical data sheet. MapaRap 11 and MapaRap 12 can be used to provide better adhesion for embedding heavyweight fabrics. When using MapaRap 11 or MapaRap 12 to smooth and level a substrate, Apply it at a thickness of 1 32nd to 1 6th inch or 1 to 4 millimeters. Apply the adhesive while the primer is still wet or tacky and then use a flat trowel to smooth the surface and remove any imperfections. MapaRap 11 is primarily used in cooler climates from 41 to 73 degrees Fahrenheit or 5 to 23 degrees Celsius. It has an approximate working time of 40 minutes at 73 degrees Fahrenheit or 23 degrees Celsius. MapaRap 12 will provide a longer pot life and is also suited to temperatures from 73 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit or 23 to 30 degrees Celsius. It has an approximate working time of 60 minutes at 73 degrees Fahrenheit or 23 degrees Celsius. MapaRap 21 is a low viscosity 100% solids epoxy saturant specifically designed to wet out fibers. It can be used with manual or automatic saturation equipment. Once mixed, MapaRap 21 will allow 20 to 60 minutes of working time 
in a temperature range of 50 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit or 10 to 30 degrees Celsius. In this case, a homemade saturation table is used to saturate or wet out the fabric. Once the fabric appears uniformly saturated with resin, it can be rolled onto a pipe or cylinder to facilitate its transportation and handling, ensuring that the fibers are not damaged by folding or pulling. Care is taken to place the saturated fabric in the correct position and then unroll it along the location marked by tracings or tape lines. This ensures that the fabric remains on a straight plane by pulling the material as tightly as possible without having it slide. Once the fabric is installed onto the substrate, follow up by using a ribbed roller to ensure the removal of any air pockets trapped beneath the fabric, which could weaken the overall system. Place an additional coat of MapaRap 21 by roller until the installed fabric shows a glossy surface, and then use the ribbed roller again as often as needed. If additional layers of carbon fiber fabric need to be overlapped, it is often more effective to do so immediately while the previous resin is still fresh. This ensures a better bond between layers. After several passes using a ribbed roller, another light coat of MapaRap 21 is applied onto the surface. Immediately afterward, a saturating broadcast of clean dry quartz sand, 20 to 30 mesh in size, is applied to the surface. This sand broadcast will provide a mechanical bond for future installations of any decorative paints or any modified cementitious acrylic or polyurethane protective coatings that may follow, giving the final aesthetic appearance required by the specifier. MapaRap 31 saturating resin is mixed and used for a dry layup installation of fabrics. When installing with the dry layup method, the installer uses a brush or a paint roller to apply a uniform first coat of MapaRap 31 over MapaRap Primer 1 or optional fresh MapaRap 11 or MapaRap 12. Immediately, he will lay out the dry fabric. Next, he will use a plastic spatula to remove any wrinkles or creases. After applying the MapaRap Uniax fabric and removing any creases, apply a second coat of MapaRap 31 by brush or roller. Work the fabric with a ribbed roller to help the resin saturate the fabric and to remove any air voids that may be trapped behind the fiber. While the MapaRap 31 is still wet, the installer will sand broadcast oven dried silica sand that is 20 to 30 mesh in size. This sand broadcast provides a mechanical bond for other finishing materials if needed. The CarboPlate system incorporates pre-cured carbon fiber laminates manufactured through an innovative pultrusion process that places protective plastic film on both sides of the laminate. This eliminates the need to wipe down the laminates with solvent. With the CarboPlate system, plates or laminates are bonded to the concrete surface elements with a thixotropic epoxy adhesive, MapaRap 11 or MapaRap 12, to repair, upgrade, or increase the flexural strength of beams or slabs. As with the other carbon fiber products, MapaRap Primer 1 is installed onto the substrate to consolidate and improve bonding of the CarboPlate products. The MapaRap 11 or MapaRap 12 serves as a leveling product as well as an adhesive for bonding the carboplate laminates to the substrate. Once the primer becomes tacky, MapaRap 11 or MapaRap 12 is installed onto the substrate at a thickness of 1 32nd to 5 64ths of an inch or 1 to 2 millimeters. The installer will prepare the carboplate laminate by peeling back the plastic film and then applying an even coat of MapaRap 11 or MapaRap 12 at a thickness of 40 mils. Install the carboplate, applying constant pressure over the whole surface to ensure full contact of carboplate to the epoxy adhesive. Remove any excess resin adhesive with a trowel. Once the resin has hardened sufficiently without worries of the carboplate moving, the apparent second layer of plastic film can be removed from carboplate. To protect FRP resins from deterioration by UV rays, speak with a MAPE representative about using products from MAPE's Elastacolor line or polyurethane line.